What's up, everybody? It's Randy Hilarski here. Wow, uh, uh, Yorgi just came on. <laughs> we we didn't even have a backroom time to discuss what we're going to talk talk about, but it's okay. Uh, I've been with working with Orox on and off since 2017, back when I was just a tester of the of the Orox platform, and uh, uh, I'm kind of a fanboy. Uh, yeah, I've been using this for so long the orx indicator has been a wonderful tool to my at my disposal as well as so many of my followers and uh Yorgi, i, I want to thank you for you and taraz for what you guys have done and what you've built and the tools that you have given us to make our lives as crypto folks so much better so uh give us a little bit of background about you because i know a lot of my my followers don't know who you are they know about orox but they don't know you the ceo of orox yeah, uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, like you said, we've been uh, working together, known each other for a long time now. So I'm uh, happy to be on. And um, yeah, I can give you a quick background. So uh, myself, Taras, and Giga are actually the co-founders of Orox. We founded it back in 2017, 2018. Um, we wanted to create a platform that made it easy for users to trade across multiple decentralized exchanges, centralized exchanges, had all the... <laughs> tools analytics uh indicators everything uh at the at, at the top of a keyboard um so we started working on that all-in-one trading terminal we released it uh, publicly in september of 2020 um about six months later uh, we released the Orox uh, token and then over the period of time we started developing the terminal more and more started focusing more on the decentralized side um, and from there, the Rocks Wallet was born, uh, the Rocks Mobile application, which is now pending uh, Apple's approval. And over the next um, I don't know, year or two, we're going to be really focusing on those products and making decentralization feel like centralization without eliminating that core aspect that everyone loves, which is obviously DeFi. Okay. Um, and that's where we're at today. All right, all right. But one of the first, I mean, this is a question that just came up in chat. I have some prepared questions because I've been asking people what they want me to talk about. But this one, um, is it a hot wallet? Yeah, uh, so it is a hot wallet. Um, usually, you know, people uh, reference software-based wallets as hot wallets. Um, so I guess it depends on, uh, on who you ask. But usually hot wallets are considered um, software-based wallets, uh, mobile applications, uh, extensions, etc. Whereas the cold wallets are usually for for retail mainly and, and I guess some institutions is considered the hardware um, wallets like Ledger and Trezor. So yes, um, in general, our wallet is considered a hot wallet, but we've taken as many steps necessary to make it as secure as possible uh, for any type of hot wallet out there, any type of software wallet out there. Um, you know, obviously hardware wallets have an additional perk of it being offline, but with our product we've done as much as possible to make it as safe as possible for anyone and, to and we get to add products. these to it i mean it's not like we can't correct. use this yes. right correct so that that makes it easier a putting guru says good day randy tell him i love my Aurox wallet yeah <laughs> look i mean i'm doing great with the referrals i think i signed i'm just about to hit 200 referrals oh wow uh, yeah it, it's growing pretty fast and i'm telling everybody in the group like you remember when binance launched you remember the referral code a lot of people made a uh, shit ton of money with their Binance links. And I think that this is another opportunity, but one that can go on for a long, long time yeah. because DeFi is here to stay. And uh, okay, let's go, into, let's go into that really quick. Let's touch that really quick. Mm -hmm. With the Orox wallet, with the referral program, I want, let's talk about this early on yep. because I don't think people understand the ramifications of what's gonna happen once we start earning a portion of the fees. Correct. Um, yeah, so we actually have the first revenue model, the gas is swapping and the internal swapping um, pending approval uh, from uh, an extension store. Um, usually those approvals took like 24, 48 hours. It's taking a little longer probably because it was just a bigger update. Uh, once that's rolled out, we're going to have a period where swapping is going to be free uh, because we want to incentivize people to obviously utilize it and get used to it. Um, and then from there, we're going to be charging a, a fee uh, for the users to swap through it. That's just one part of it. Any fee that our company generates and uh, our, your audience and our users can actually go to our documentation, see how that fee is distributed. But any fee that any revenue our uh, users generate will actually go back to those referrals. 
uh, for a lifetime commission. So even if you promote now and then you're, let's say you never touch cryptocurrency again for whatever reason, you're actually going to be getting those commissions um, until basically our company <laughs> ceases to exist for whatever reason, if our company ceases to exist for whatever reason. Um, so that's the first revenue source. Uh, we're going to be releasing another revenue source here probably in about 30 days. Um, I want to save that portion, but that portion I think is going to have a much higher impact. There's going to be a lot more revenue generated with a smaller audience because okay. um, a lot of people don't have, you know, tens of thousands of people that they can sign up. They have maybe 50 at the most. Right. Um, Their immediate so circle. Wanna... Their immediate circle. Correct. People, friends and family, things like that. Correct. Yeah. So we want to make sure that those users are able to take advantage of it. Um, this revenue source is going to be pretty uh, significant, not for just for our company, but for those individuals as well. And then finally, the third revenue source that we'll probably release around, you know, uh, early summer, um, that will go into revenue outside of the internals of, of the uh, of the wallet in a way. So if someone has the wallet installed and they're executing DApp transactions on Uniswap or uh, whatever it might be, um, the users that are actually going to generate us revenue um, and we're going to be distributing that to the affiliates as well. So throughout the entire process, every time that we release a revenue source, that revenue goes back to those commissions, to the referrals. All right, great. Okay, I got. I do want to bring up something because my viewers obviously are a majority Hexkins. Yes. I remember back in the day before you even announced uh, staking for Orox. I don't remember. I don't remember if it was you or Taraz who wrote me and said, "Randy, we're we're going to have staking as uh, one of the features for the Urus token. We want to make it similar to what Hex has with the lockup feature." Do you think this is a good idea? And I'm like, hell yeah, it's a good idea. So uh, I just, <laughs> everyone's here. Have you actually ever owned Hex? It's okay if you haven't, but we just want to. Uh, actually, in the past, uh, I don't know, year or so, we've stopped um, personally and in and, and, and company. We stopped uh, putting any tokens on our balance sheet temporarily while we're going through the uh, approval process with S1. Um, we just don't want to... What we're doing right now is a, is a pretty significant step for any DeFi company, and we don't want to add any more things that the SEC can come back to us and have questions about. Okay. Once we get through this process, then we'll have a little more clarity and we'll have be able to understand what our company and myself are able to do. But right now, we're just trying to minimize as much of a footprint as possible to- oh, there, There's um, some people in here don't even know what you mean by having to deal yeah. with the SEC. Could you break that down a little bit? Because this is not normal for a crypto talk. This is not the normal discussion. <laughs> yeah. So um, about a year and a half ago now, uh, we decided to uh, basically go public. Uh, we want to take our company to a national stock exchange. And it would make us the first uh, DeFi Web3 oriented, strictly DeFi uh, Web3 oriented company on a national stock exchange like NYC. Uh, we've done multiple different steps. We reserved the stock symbol at the NYC. We've spoken with them. We've uh, filed with SEC, um, our S1, which is like the, the legal document, I guess, in a way um, that discloses that you want to go public. Uh, that's the document that the SEC reviews. Um, we've uh, got an, our audit, basically some pretty major steps. And the last part right now, last major one that's remaining is getting that, I don't want to say approval, but a review of the S1 uh, completed. Um, the SEC does not do approvals technically, they do reviews and then they allow you to go public, not, they don't put their stamp of approval on anything. Um, so anyways, because of that process, we've been very methodical uh, and strategic about how we run our company. Um, there's a lot of things that go into it. We need to avoid certain uh, discussions or certain uh, functionalities or certain topics because it's we just need to be very careful about um, our public image at this point. And sure. that's part of the reason why we've been very careful about uh, tokens for the time being until we get through that approval process, know exactly what the SEC is concerned about before we move into the next phases. Is that part of the reason why you guys did the fair launch with a token? Uh, no, actually, we got lucky on that part. Um, that was our original idea. We, okay. we wanted to do the fair launch. However, that was not 
because that we wanted to go public. That actually came to us uh, maybe two years ago now. Um, that uh, some of the investors that came into our uh, five million dollar round proposed the idea um, as far as um, our company being able to acquire more funding, grow quicker, etc. And that was um, the that was after that we had launched the token, but because we had done it fairly the way that we have launched the token, the way we handled it, everything else, it kind of allowed us to sidestep some of these issues that some of the other companies right now are running into. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Because even at, I myself as a team member, I was in Mexico at the time and I waited until like 2 a.m. to get into the, the fair launch and I didn't have my, uh, my, my uh, slippage set high enough. And my first transaction failed. And even as a team member, I think my first coins were purchased at around two bucks. And I was like so pissed for so many weeks. I was like, <laughs> I stayed up to two freaking AM and I, and I went YOLO on this shit. And I still didn't get any tokens compared to my buddies. But the next day we were 20 bucks and I, I was still pretty happy at, a, at like 10 X, but I had staked everything out for five years. I went for the full thing. Five years, they're thrown out there. We'll see what they do. And they've been earning about 20% APY. Uh, one, of the, one of the guys does have a question about uh, the tokens. He said, will common shareholders that recently invested in Orox be rewarded with URIS? I think it's a pretty good question. Probably no, but it's a pretty yeah. good question. Uh, no, uh, if you invested in the Rex CF round, those are two separate items. Um, the token is a utility token within the platform. We don't um, we don't distribute tokens other than you know for the protocol and for the, for staking, liquidity mining. Um, now with that swapping things that are coming up, um, and all of that distribution is happening automatically through the smart contracts. Um, if you invest in the Rex CF that we just did, um, that is your an equity shareholder in the company. Um, so you're uh, receiving common stock, um, and that's a completely separate item. Um, that's a security itself because it's a common stock, whereas the token is a strictly a utility token. We can't, I mean, legally, and, and we wouldn't anyways. Yeah, I love the fact that it's 100% utility. You own it, it, gives, it helps you on the platform, you, you don't have to pay fees, and there's staking features, and there's just not much to it. It's it just, it's very simple. Correct. You know, it's not like, it's not like it's a, uh, a dividend token or anything Correct. like that, right? Correct. Uh, Z said, who is the founder of Orax? Just tune yeah. in. You want to break it down for them? Yeah. Uh, so myself, uh, I'm the CEO. My um, partner, Giga, uh, is the CTO. And then the and Tara is, uh, is the COO. We founded the company. We own almost majority of the shares in the company, the majority of the equity in the company. Yeah, these guys have been fair. I mean, I've known them since, I think Taraz originally joined my, I had a Facebook trading group. And uh, this is going back 2016. I think that's when he joined the group. And uh, it, just, it just grew from there. And when, when he announced that you guys are launching a, a trading, trading view competitor, everyone's like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> these, guys got, these guys got big sets or they, they really know what they're doing. And then it, it came out. We're like, oh, wow, this is, this is pretty neat. So I remember every single one of us, there's about 60 of us in the group. We all got our accounts early on. We were all testers and to see how it worked and everyone most of most of them to this day are still using it and i've been yeah. using orox indicator since day one yeah uh we still have a lot of users that are i mean they have like thousands of sessions uh, on the platform at this point uh they've been around since like before the actual public release uh, of the platform <laughs> kinetic says what's up randy is Jorgen the guy that keeps ignoring my emails <laughs> <laughs> uh probably potentially uh, uh i've been uh behind actually it depends uh if you're actually i i, I want to be if you emailed me directly uh your get get rocks.com probably not but if you're even emailing support at your uh, support at orox get rocks.com that goes to like a support email which i don't check we have our customer support that that checks that so just be aware like if you're even if you're communicating with me through that support email i do check and i do respond from time to time but just not as often as my personal inbox that's fair enough, man. We, we are all, we're all pretty busy, especially you guys that are founders. Uh, Crypto Barry says, so Gary Gensler question, is this a security? <laughs> <laughs> the the CF and the equity, yes. Um, it's definitely, if you were part of that, it's a security. Uh, you invested in the company, you were invested in the equity. Um, it's registered, or I guess it's filed, not technically registered, but it's filed. Um, the token is not, and we have a pretty solid argument um, that we've been using uh, to go through the IPO process. 
All right, great. And Kinetics, again, he says, any chance you guys will be, will let accredited investors like myself invest before I, your IPO? So we did have the, I need to be clear, a potential IPO, because we have to use that terminology. Uh, obviously, nothing is confirmed until uh, we get that approval. Um, we did have a CF um, just recently. Um, it's actually not even fully closed yet. It's not uh, completed, but we did have a CF where people were able to invest at a 75 million valuation. Um, we might be doing something soon, uh, but it would not be the same. Um, like in a CF, if you were accredited or not, you could have invested. If we do do another round, it's going to be accredited investors and it's going to have a significant uh, minimum. Uh, I mean, the CF had $252. The, if we do another round, it would have be I don't know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands uh, as a minimum. All right, great. Uh, Warhammer said, he's talking about the pulse chain sacrifice. Uh, he says, I assume we can transfer tokens from MetaMask to Orox and we can't transfer our SAC address from MMM, MMM to Orox. You're sure you can. It's yeah. just you're importing your addresses. That's all. Yep. You can import your mnemonic, your private key directly into the wallet. Uh, Doug says, if I had Orox tokens, could I swap for Orox stock? No, you got to get cash yeah. first, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Those are uh, <laughs> separate and separate items. Uh, yeah. Two different things. Yeah. <laughs> Parallel universes. <laughs> so, yeah, Tony says, no, two different things. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Multi-chain swapping is one linchpin in DeFi that if your wallet makes it easy, will be a game changer. Yep. Uh, we're So the gas is swapping and the order routing was the first step. Now we're going to be shifting focus over to... Um, got crushing, swapping, and, and, and multiple other things to extend out the protocol. <laughs> okay, good. I'm laughing at Pineapple. He says, give us a discount for buying your indicators. We already do, man. Just own Aura's tokens. That's yeah. all you have to do. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to pay the monthly fees. All you have to do is have your token staked. And uh, let me, I do have more questions about that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a question about the gas of swapping first. Will that yeah. go live soon? How long are we waiting yeah. for that? Mm -hmm. No, I was expecting it to go live last week. Actually, we had all our marketing and everything planned out um, right now. Actually, let me double check if it's still in review. Um, we submitted it last the week before uh, last. Um, I think it was on Friday or Saturday. Um, it's working. It's ready to go. We're just uh, waiting for the approval uh, from Google. OK. All right. Um, let's see. I'm looking at the different questions I have here. When will Orox wallet fees begin to be distributed to referrers? I, I know we talked about that earlier, but can we just get a definitive answer? Yes. Yeah, so as soon as the gas is swapping is ready, uh, when that swapping goes live, the first 30 days, there's not going to be a fee. Uh, once the fee is charged, then the distribution from that uh, will probably take place on a net 30 basis. So every 30 days, there's going to be an automatic payout um, from the contract. Beautiful. Beautiful. Can you explain the different levels in the Orox wallet and how we can level up quicker? Yeah, um, so there's 10 levels. Um, uh, most people are probably on level three, I would imagine, at this point. I, I made it to four. Yeah, I'm, I'm four. there, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, the quickest way right now would be obviously holding the uh, token. Um, so there's a minimum of 50 tokens. If you're holding that, you get 1.5 times uh, normal points. Um, to acquire the points sending uh, and actually utilizing the, the wallet, um, on a daily basis um, will let you earn points relatively quickly. And then as soon as this gas of swapping is, is ready, then you have a maximum of 10,000 points that you can acquire uh, within wallet swapping. So if you're using swapping and then you start swapping within the wallet, you're going to be leveling up pretty quickly. Um, okay. And we're going to be extending those points uh, more and more. Um, so as more and more revenue rolls out, people are going to be incentivized to utilize the well, the, the monthly the prizes are pretty substantial. You've got yeah. level three, there's like 25,000 in prizes. Level four, there's like 50, 50K in prizes. That's all within the Discord though, right? That happens. Yeah. Discord. Yeah. So we send out an email to everyone letting them know. Um, the drawing is uh, actually, I don't handle this part. Shiga does. So he probably has a little more clarity on it. Um, usually the drawings are done in Discord. Um, I think we've done three or maybe four at this point. Um, I can't remember, but, you know, we've sent out ledgers, um, an iPhone, I think, uh, just random things uh, uh, to uh, fill in that gap of like, let's say $25,000 that was given up. Okay. All right. The elephant in the room, freaking iOS. What's going on with it? It's still pending review. Um, they, so initially when we received the, the, when we received the disapproval or not a disapproval, but 
request to explain um, uh, a certain functionality. Um, I asked them, you know, I was, I told them that we were going through the S1 process. We have all the legal documents. I could show it to you. Uh, our attorneys are available. They're like, no, no, we just need you to explain. Their main issue was uh, the trading functionality because they thought that we were a centralized exchange. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so we made it look so similar to a centralized exchange that they literally think that we're a centralized exchange. Um, so we sent them an email. I contacted them. I spoke with the agent, everything else. And um, they just kept going back and forth. And I would just explain it. I would send an email. It's like, no, we want more info. And then finally, towards the end, they're like, okay, fine. Well, you, if you can have your attorney draft up a letter um, to explain that this is not uh, a centralized exchange then we'll approve you and that's kind of where we're at right now is explaining that situation to them legally so they can get that approval process all right it's, it's such a pain in the ass that we have to go through all this and it's been a long time too it's not like it's just a couple weeks yeah. It's been months. No, no. yeah no i mean i even uh, in the initial letter or the initial time that they sent that email i was like look there's metamask there's uh one inch there's like different applications that have decentralized order routing. Uh, we're not doing anything on that end that's different. Uh, we're using blockchain smart contracts to execute orders. And they're like, well, we don't care about those companies. Like if you have an issue with those companies and if you think they're breaking any uh, types of terms of service, you can report them. I'm like, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm saying that our order routing, that the issue that you have with that is already live in like 20 different applications, almost identical. Um, and they just wouldn't accept that that it it was like the same exact answer like if you have a problem with them report them there's a different <laughs> department that takes care of it it's such a headache man i'm sorry i don't have to deal with these things you know i i i, I was doing my own project i worked on it for three years and i just canned the whole thing i told my investor i'm giving you back all your money because this stuff's a freaking headache man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not easy yeah. and i know richard hart says it all the time software is not easy if it was no. easy Everybody would be doing it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of Richard Hart, let's. This is a question of questions because everybody in here, I would say, eighty percent of the viewers are going to either sack for Pulse Chain or Pulse X. Uh, they've been hearing about Orax now since I, you know, I went full time streaming uh, in September, and it's pretty apparent. Pulse Chain users yep. are anxious to know: Will Urus be supported on Pulse Chain, and will the Orax wallet support the new chain? Um, so the token portion, we can't, um, that would just take way too much work, unfortunately, like oh, even dude. when we did the migration from ETH to, uh, by binance chain, um, when we split the, the, the amount of tokens on both chains and the liquidity on both chains, it was just, I mean, uh, I can't even go into how stressful that entire process was. Cause you make one mistake and all of a sudden you're, you're done. <laughs> There's no going back. Um, so on the token side, I don't think we're going to be able to, uh, however, um, uh, on the blockchain side, yes. Um, I know I communicated with you, um, I expressed interest. Um, I was just trying to get an idea of the, the pull chain timeline. And I think that it kind of, I kind of falls in line with, um, with what we want to do as well. So, um, we have right now we have support for Ethereum, Binance chain, uh, Avalanche, Polygon, we're about to release Arbitrum. Yeah. And I think uh, Pulse Chain is going to be, I mean, not I think, I, Pulse Chain is going to be right behind that. So um, we do want to support it. We're just, uh, I guess, waiting to see uh, when it goes live. Oh, great. Okay. Because uh, obviously, I think Pulse Chain is going to be huge. And already uh, there's four million wallets, and it's because every wallet in Ethereum has been copied over. Yeah, it's, it's the largest airdrop ever. It's going to be freaking yeah. exciting. So um, just remember, though, there's people like myself who have no problem wrapping tokens and providing liquidity and and bringing some value over to Urus. You know, I'm sure there's some other people that will do it, too. So we, we don't need you guys to provide liquidity. <laughs> we can do it ourselves. <laughs> that Yeah, that part, I actually didn't think about it because, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's a feasibility. Um, wrapping it and, and having it on the other chain, uh, yeah. whole chain, it, it's possible. The main issue was just, I mean, we'd have to do another migration to support native um, uh, <laughs> that answered assets. more to the SEC, right? <laughs> really? 
<laughs> you guys are just creating money out of thin air. God damn it. <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> All right. Yeah, I get it. Um, ah, geez. I, I did have another question. I, I totally lost it there, but it's okay. Now, as regarding to the future of Orox and the tools, because you guys are tool masters. You're not so much building coins just to pump and dump. You're yep. building tools like the during the gold mining days. You guys are providing the Levi jeans and the shovels sure. and all and the pickaxes. And so I tell people that we're uh, Orox is. Is there anything coming that we should know about that yep. you can uh, red grow? Actually, um, maybe I have it installed and I can even demo it real quick. Oh, cool. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, yeah, I do. Ha it, it's a very small demo. I'm, actually, let me double check to make sure it's the right version. Okay, it is. Um, this is uh, this is in in development right now. It's not anywhere. Oh, it's not the right button. It's not anywhere uh, near ready. Um, so I will show you what it looks like. Let's see, share my screen. But this is what we're really excited about is um, is this version of it. So. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Oh, I can add it. There oh. we go. <clears throat> All right. So, or actually, I might need to share my. Actually, no, it's fine. Um, can you see the wallet? No, not on StreamYard. StreamYard protects okay. you from showing your wallet. Okay. So I'll just click the button. Basically, what we're doing is building a decentralized terminal within the wallet itself. Um, so I just click the button in my extension and it opens up this tab. I don't know if you can see the URL, but you can see the URL if you can. Uh, it shows Chrome yep. dash extension. Um, so this product right now is actually built directly into the extension itself. And what it does is, I mean, it obviously displays my portfolio balance, all my holdings in here. Um, I can actually even search for other people's portfolios. So I have like Vitalix um, uh, up here. Um, and I can <laughs> see such a voyeur. Yeah. Um, and I can see all the transactions, everything. Um, and this is where, again, in development, there's obviously some things that are missing, but um, this is where the, the trading functionality will be built in. And what's going to be different about this is that because it's built into the extension itself, the wallet actually knows your private keys by default. It, mm. That's how you execute transactions. Um, and because it knows your private keys by default, we can eliminate some of the complexities of trading. Um, we can make it one click process. So instead of having a pop up of like, you know, connect your wallet and then uh, click this button to execute the transaction. And then you have like a bunch of weird things going on. Um, here, it'll just be a one click process where you just click buy, it executes the transaction, swap, and you're done and you're ready to go. No pop ups, no wallet connect dialogues, no, none of that. All of that is done behind the scenes by the wallet itself. Um, and it's built directly into your browser. So as soon as you have it installed, you're ready to go. This is what we're really excited about releasing very soon. It's, it, it reminds me a little bit of the MetaMask portfolio. But I don't think, yeah. can you trade directly in the MetaMask portfolio? I'm not even sure. I, I haven't tried to use it, use it for you that. Can, so. You can, but you still have to connect your wallet and still deal with all those complex issues. Whereas through here, it's completely, it'll feel like a centralized exchange. There'll be oh, almost wow. no difference in the user experience. <laughs> Making DeFi more normal. I love it, right. you know, because that's one yeah. of the big, big steps for folks, especially gray hairs like myself. You know, um, I have my no permissions uh, Patreon and and our folks in there. We we just want simple. We we yeah. want to want it to work just like we would in the old school system. And right. it seems like you guys are working on that. Thank yep. you. I appreciate it. Yep. Um, <clears throat> this is a quite, I know the answer, but you can go ahead and answer it. Or is token supply handy, hand cap? Hard, hard capped at 1 million. Correct. Yes, um, it is hard capped at 1 million. There's two contracts deployed, one on BSC and one on Ethereum. Um, but in total, the, there's 1 million technically supply on both chains, but circulating supply will never be more than 1 million uh, on in both chains combined. Okay. All right, great. Uh, CryptoBerry says, do you have API key or tax compatibility process to send to a tax coin preparer site? Well, that's a deep one. <laughs> yeah, um, not right now, but we want to, um, we're actually, um, one of our attorneys is Gordon. Um, I highly suggest anyone that's doing their taxes to go to uh, Gordon Law, I think is, is uh, his. 
practice. Um, but I highly suggest anyone to go to him. Um, yeah, Gordon Law Group. It would be really um, cool if you could Law download a CSV. Yeah, we're, we basically want to do two parts. Um, you're right, downloading a CSV, and then the second part where it, Gordon processes everything for you, um, and then you just download the, the tax filing, and you can submit it, or you can have them submit it. That's badass, man. <laughs> See, I'm even on, I'm on a team. I don't know half the shit. So <laughs> it's like there's a lot of <laughs> moving parts behind the scenes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, does Orox have any trading bots? <laughs> Excuse me. Plan for the future, maybe for owning a certain amount of Orox. Um, uh, we are working on something internally. We're not sure whether um, we'll make it public yet or not until we figure out if it works and how well it works. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure, to be honest. We are working on something internally, but I'm not sure if we're going to release it or when we're going to release it. Okay. New Orox new user here. Reagan, welcome. Okari IO says, how much is the fee for browser extension trades? That's um, depends. Yes, right? Yeah, so right now, uh, I mean, if you're connecting to dApps and everything else, it's free. Uh, the in-wallet swapping is going to be free for a certain period of time. And then we're probably going to be charging about 0.3%, which 50% uh, of that is going to be distributed to the referral uh, uh, program users. Okay, now this is a question from Discord. Uh, someone asked mm -hmm. to ask you, when will the onboarding of new users begin? I can, I kind of suspect it's starting now because you brought on Crypto RS, you brought, yeah. brought in Altcoin Daily. Is that Correct. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're um, starting to gear up uh, towards that end. Um, so um, we're going to be promoting it, the wallet significantly. Um, and then once the terminal is gone through the UI we designed, we're going to be promoting both um, at that point. Okay, great. Well, that was all the questions. Now, is there anything you want to tell us or give us updates about, or you feel personally, are you excited about in the future, those kind of things? Yeah. Because... You know, I, there's some things I just don't know what to ask. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, we're definitely excited. Um, obviously, there's um, uh, legal stuff that not only us, but the rest of uh, uh, crypto is, has been being hammered on recently. So um, I think that uh, centralized exchanges are going to have more difficulty uh, in the near future, which allows us to capitalize on it. Um, I think it's going to move focus more to DeFi. And I think the next bull run is going to be really focused on DeFi even more than it was the past one. Um, so I'm excited to be there for our company to be early on in that phase to create these more centralized fuel uh, platforms while leveraging DeFi and allow those new users to get into DeFi without even realizing it um, in the near future. So even though there's some headaches right now on the legal side, I think that's going to clear up over the next year or two. And I think that's when we're going to see really um, DeFi uh, take hold uh, significantly. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud to have been part of the team on and off since the beginning, you know, being there in the planning stages. And it's like it's like watching a baby grow up and yeah. you guys just keep expanding and keep doing more things. And, um, you know, people give me a hard time about, you guys are the only company that I work with outside of the Pulse Chain slash Hex ecosystem. Uh, I had the guys from Algorand come to me asking me if I'll just talk about Algorand. I'm like, no, I won't. You know, <laughs> it's like it's like you guys are the last the last vestiges of my former shilling career going back to 2015. You know, it's like now I, all I do is talk Pulse Chain Hex and I tell everyone to use Orox. Um, one thing we didn't talk about was the simulation. Mm -hmm. And and the safety features, I tell people it's like a staircase. You go up, you go up the MetaMask staircase. There's no railings. You go up the 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 Orox staircase, Orox wallet staircase, and you have railings. Could you go through a couple of those safety features with us? Yeah. Um, so initially, we started with um, two specific functionalities. Uh, one was the anti phishing. Um, some of our users, for example, back in the day. Um, they were new to DeFi, they were new to non-custodial um, platforms, and they had typed in their mnemonic um, from their MetaMask into a website, lost their lost their Orox tokens, plus ETH and plus whatever else that they were holding, uh, just completely drained. Um, and usually what would happen is as soon as their wallet was hacked, their Orox tokens would get dumped, like someone's 
uh, Oroch tokens were sold off like tens of thousands of dollars directly on the market. So not only did that impact that individual, but it impacted everyone else um, that was part of a community. So we wanted to add anti fishing. So that was the first thing that we added. Now, if a user has the extension installed, as I mentioned, the extension itself knows your mnemonic, knows your private keys. So if you, if a new user types in their mnemonic into a website, it'll pop it up and say, hey, you're making a mistake, you're gonna get hacked. <laughs> um, hopefully that's enough to dissuade them and not <laughs> continue. But if they do wanna continue, they still have the option. Um, you know, they can bypass our screen and, and still type it in if they really, really wanna get hacked. Um, so that was the first part. Um, that's to protect the new users. The second part was, um, I don't know if people remember, but Badger DAO uh, was hacked a while back. Uh, their front end was compromised and the attacker basically switched out the smart contracts um, on the front end. And when people connected the wallets, they were interacting with this fake smart contract that drained their wallets. Um, so to protect against those type of attacks, we basically track and monitor some of the biggest smart contracts out there, the biggest protocols. So when you're in, interacting with this protocol, you get displayed a, a green, yellow, orange, or red warning message that this contract is potentially safe uh, or is safe, is on our whitelist, uh, is potentially safe because it's open source and uh, usually hackers don't open source their contracts or if it's not open source, or if it's on our blacklist. It'll tell you all those things just in case another Badger DAO incident happens. Hey, can we get the Aura's token and the green, please? Uh, on the on the, the label? I thought it was. <laughs> it's yellow. It's still totally it? yellow. <laughs> <laughs> on, uh, on what site? Uh, I'm just, when you went to Uniswap and stuff, it still says it's yellow. Oh, no, no, that one, um, it detects the contracts themselves, like the Uniswap ah, contract, not not okay. the token. So okay. the reason that Uniswap, I need to add, have our team added, the reason that Uniswap's not in there because they switched that permit to uh, contract recently. Um, the old one was, but now that they switched the permit to contract, that one's not. But it's okay. detecting the contract of the protocol itself, not the, the token. I don't want to segue too much. Could we also get Uniswap version three and the platform? Because we're still yes. seeing Uniswap version two, and there's a lot of hex users in there, and it's just you get these wicks and stuff because there's no yeah. liquidity on version two. Yeah, no, uh, we have a task for that. Um, our developers working on that right now, actually. See, these are questions that you only get for people who actually use the platform. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, Regan says uh, feature proposal: define average candle pixel height and make it apply across various time frames. I don't know what that means, but it sounds cool to me. Um, yeah, if you want to, I'm not sure what you mean exactly, but if you wanted to describe it, maybe we can uh, add Come it. Come to the Discord. They're bringing it to yeah. the Discord, Ryan. Okay. Uh, Soldier Pete says, using Orox wallet linked to web. Orox, can you trade? Yes, I know that. And easy to do. Are you also adding more exchanges like Qcoin, et cetera? Um, to the terminal or the wallet? Because to I, the terminal, we have Qcoin on there. I, but the, the Orox wallet already, it'll attach to the terminal, correct? Yeah, correct. Yes, but but it's only going to work with trading with DeFi. It doesn't correct. work directly yes. to KuCoin. Yeah. No, no. Uh, if you were trading through KuCoin, you basically have to link up your account to the terminal through API. Right. Exactly. Okay. So, Soldier Pete, I hope you understood that. <laughs> it's like we're talking two different things. There's centralized and there's decentralized. And, and this is wallet exact, more decentralized. Yeah, and this is exactly why we're building that full view is to the. Uh, for people that are coming from those centralized exchanges and are used to centralized exchanges, that's where the full view is going to be extremely important. Okay. Uh, Cryptoberry says, as word of advice, you have lots of great features, but I would recommend make this stupid proof and easy to use. And you'll be, you'll get a lot of business. Exactly. Ramps, taxes, yep. education. That's that, that seems exactly like what you guys are doing. Yep. Um, and Jay Money says, can lower the token minimum to 20 for the wallet levels? Um, Probably not right now. Uh, at fifty, we're talking. It's at twenty dollars, about a thousand dollars, and and you're holding the token, right? You're not uh, paying with it. Yeah. Can I say uh, something about this? We had a token that was worth three hundred dollars each at the peak of the last market. So <laughs> we're we got quite a discount right now if you're only buying twenty. <laughs> so we're doing pretty good. How many tokens are needed to get staked to get the top tier services? 
Um, I'd have to double check. I can't remember. Do you remember? Uh, I think we changed it recently, or maybe a couple months. Is back, it is but... it USD based, or is it based on how many tokens you need? Oh no, we uh, we update it based on the USD value. So um, it used right. to be, I think, fifty tokens on the terminal, and then we dropped it when it went up to three hundred, and then we I think we increased a little bit as well. So we take into our company takes into account US dollar value to give you access, and we excuse me, and then we adjust that based on that USD value. Totally fair. Totally fair. All right now, I just I went in the other day and bought fifty just to have in my hot wallet. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I, I told you I had. The rest of my stake for five years from that was in 2020 launch was what january 2020 uh, may 2020 something like that february uh 2021 february 2021 2021 yeah so i got a long time to wait for those <laughs> <laughs> Dana says thank you yorgi and randy for these or orox alpha news you are welcome uh the discord link yeah you can yep. get it right on the website at getorx.com yep. that's a good place to find it uh, Rainmaker for real says, I think I'm ready for that one on one call, Randy. All right, hit me up. Just you can do it right through the um, right through the no permissions Patreon. Patreon's blowing up, Jordy. I have to say, really? nice. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Um, if Uniswap only connects on version two, what about the other link, one inch, et cetera? Are they okay to connect and buy and sell? Yeah, um, you can connect the wallet to any decentralized application. It's just the data within the product itself, like the charts and everything else. We only have Uniswap version 2 right now, but you can use it for anything, anything on the Ethereum network or any other EVM network. Oh, very good. Okay, if anybody doesn't have any other questions, I'm through mine, and it looks like you guys have exhausted them. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Any, any parting words before we end this? No, um, thank you for having me on. And like I mentioned, you know, we're um, definitely going to be adding Pulse Chain. Um, we're going to be waiting for that to come out. Um, and we want to have all the data and all the functionalities that our wallet currently has for the other chains available uh, for Pulse. So uh, look out for that. And of course, if you're using a wallet, look out for the gas is swapping um, as soon as this approval is done. And then the full view is coming very, very soon. I think that's going to be the biggest uh, functionality that we're going to release. Uh, I, I just went through it the other day, having to like, like dig up Ethereum and like multiple wallets and set them. I'm like, this is such bullshit. Can we have gas slopping, please? Greg says, can you use the Orox wallet as a UI for hardware yes. wallets? Yes, we support uh, Ledger and Trezor right now. So you can definitely link up your hardware wallet to it. Oh, wait, I forgot. The 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 wallet is now white label. It can, uh, it's oh, open source. Yep, yeah, correct. Yep, so you guys can look over the code if you want or even report issues directly on GitHub. Um, everything is open source. And Kinetics, could you, since you have the ear of Richard Hart, can you please send him this, please, so we could have our own Pulse Chain wallet? I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jorgen, thank you so much. I appreciate having you on. Um, yeah, of course, we'll run the broadcast here, and I will be making shorts out of a bunch of this. I really appreciate you. Sounds good. I appreciate it. Thanks, everyone, and thank you, Randy, for having me on. All right, cheers, everybody. Thanks. Bye.